Good day crew and welcome to the third episode in Overnight Anchorages around Moreton Bay. I really got it wrong when I started this and thought I'd finish it in one episode. We're going to go four episodes. In this episode I'll cover the area in the central bay and I hope to finish that. I think I'll finish that in this episode. But in the next episode I want to go further south into the southern end of the bay because down there you can find shelter from virtually any weather. I wouldn't go out and gale force winds anywhere in the bay, but if you're caught out in the southern end of the bay, you can find shelter somewhere. But for now, let's get on with having a look at the central area of the bay. We did peel in the previous episode, but I just want to circle back to peel and show you these images that I forgot to put in there. And these are the reef areas around peel. These first few images are basically hard coral reef, and they're mainly around southwest rocks, the western side of Peel, and the northwestern side of Peel. These other areas here are a mixture of hard and soft coral, and that's mainly around the eastern side of the island. You get fish in all of these areas, but I've always tended to do better on the western side, up to around the Lazarette. However, I have seen some really good fish caught by other people on the eastern side. On a really good night, you can overnight anywhere in the bay. you just got to watch out for changes in weather. But when you do get that change in weather, you want to be sheltered around an island. And you can fish any of these areas around Peel. Some of them are just better than others, depending on the weather. And believe me, you've only got to get it wrong once or twice, and you soon learn. And before we leave Peel once again... I'll just superimpose this image of the green zone over the reef areas to give you an idea of where you've got to be careful about where you fish. So now to continue from where we left off last time, let's move up to the Wonga Wallen banks. That's a decent area for anchoring overnight, nice good shelter there. Better for a small boat in my opinion. I've anchored up in that area in a bigger boat, but usually out a little bit deeper water. In a small boat, you should be able to get up behind that sandbank and get some really good shelter in bad weather. You can see it in the satellite photo and in the Navionics map. There's a channel up behind that bank. You get a trailer boat in there, no worries. A little bit of caution at low tide, but other than that, should be fine. I haven't actually had my trailer boat up there. Took a dinghy up there once, a long time ago. Didn't have a sounder on the dinghy, but I think it'll be fine. And you've got the island to protect you from anything coming around from the east and the sandbank to protect you from anything coming from the other direction, particularly at low tide. At high tide you'll get a bit of it slopping over. Back in the day this area used to be good for squid, but now there's a green zone there, so if you're chasing squid or chasing anything in the way of fishing, make sure you stay outside the green zone. I'll just turn on the high density contour lines so you can see where the big drop offs are in this area. I wouldn't recommend anchoring up in the main channel near the drop offs overnight, mainly because of the amount of boat traffic that goes through there, but some of them are worth a look during the day just for general fishing. However, for now, I just want to zoom in on this area behind the sandbank and show you where I would be picking as an anchorage if I were going in there. I've just turned on depth shading here and the area in yellow is between 4 and 8 metres of water. So as you can see there's a couple of deeper holes in there. Unfortunately they're in the green zone. And as I said when I took the tender from the big boat up in this area a long time ago I didn't have a sounder on it. But I knew there were some deeper areas in there just from the colour of the water. Couldn't have told you how deep they are but I sort of believe these Navionics maps and the depth contours on there. So I'd be looking to anchor up in those deeper holes. A little bit further north is Amity. There's a boat ramp there, a jetty and some rock groins they've built. I presume they've been built to try and stop erosion of the beach. But they also provide a habitat for fish. It's quite a nice beach there. Although I wouldn't be swimming there myself because Amity has quite a reputation for bull sharks hanging around. 
However, if you want to take your bait in and get off and have a stroll around the beach or go up to the shops, it's a nice spot. Just watch the tide when you do it. You don't want to get stuck high and dry. The water is quite deep, very close to shore here. So you'll need a fair bit of anchor rope out. There can be a decent current run through here when the tide's in full flow. So I've never anchored here in a smaller boat overnight. I haven't been up in a bigger boat. The big boat had a huge anchor on it and all chain, no rope. So I had no worries about it holding. In a smaller boat in this area, I think I'd be inclined to let out at least four times the depth of water in road, maybe a bit more. You can see there's some mooring buoys here, so a lot of boats do moor in this area. Mooring is not anchoring, of course, and mooring is usually more secure than an anchor, but the couple of times I've been here, I think the bottom holds fairly well. Although I think for an overnighter, I'd be looking for something a little bit shallower, perhaps, and less run in the water. Bearing in mind, you're only just around the corner from the South Passage Bar. And just up on the northern end of North Stradbroke Island, there's the wreck of a fiberglass half-cabin boat. Well, apparently there's the wreck of a half-cabin fiberglass boat. I haven't actually found that myself. It is marked on the map. So if you're looking for a wreck to fish around, there's one you could have a look for. I said at the beginning there was no rhyme or reason to the areas that I was going to cover, and there's not. From Stradbroke I'm going to jump back to the middle of the bay and talk about the Rouse Channel and in particular anchoring up at the Rouse Knob. I've done that several times overnight. It's not a bad area to anchor up overnight. You should do it in reasonable weather but the sandbanks around the area will protect you quite a lot as long as the wind's not too strong. And the fishing is pretty good as well. Particularly at night time if you can manage to stay awake to fish into the night. And here you can see the bathymetry contours around the Rouse Knob. I would imagine it's sort of a rocky area from the way that it's gouged out around it. And when I say shallow, I'm talking maybe four metres of water over it at low tide. So shallow is relative. It's shallow relative to the other areas around it. I'll put on some shading to show that now. The yellow areas here are again between four and eight metres and the orange areas are between 8 and 15 metres. If you're fishing there, I find fishing the deeper areas up close to the drop-offs is the best. You can be a little bit away from the drop-off depending on which way the current's running. If you fish too shallow, generally find that you're getting too many small fish. Another area close to the rouse that where you can overnight is Fisherman's Gutter. It's also an excellent area for catching whiting and squid. And if you're anchored up overnight at the Rouse and the weather does get a little bit bad, you can get up into Fisherman's Gutter where you've got a little bit more protection from the well. It's not perfect, but all the sandbanks around you will protect you a little bit. And depending on how bad it is, it is an option, particularly if you want to stay in that area to fish in the morning. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I've spent many a night in Fisherman's Gutter and never had a real issue except for a couple of times where the anchor was hard to get out and they were nights where the swell did get up a little bit over the banks at high tide and you could sort of feel the anchor sort of pulling on the anchor every time the swell came in and that was driving the anchor deeper and deeper into the sand and in the morning the winch wouldn't pull the anchor free what i had to do was drive the boat around in a circle around the anchor and you have to be careful when you're doing that, particularly if there's a bit of swell. You can get yourself into trouble real quick. But basically what you do is get the anchor really short, wind it up as much as you can, then drive the boat forward. And then I sort of let it go in a circle around the anchor. And that tends to pull it free. I think there was once in Fisherman's Gutter where it wasn't a bad night, but it wasn't all that pleasant either. I had to go about two or three times around the circle to get the anchor free. But that's all good because it means it's a great bottom for holding and there's nothing there that's going to snag your anchor or at least I've never seen anything there that's likely to snag your anchor. So you will get it free eventually, you just got to work at it sometimes. Anyhow, this is the track that I follow to go from the Rouse into Fisherman's Gunner. It does get a bit shallow in a couple of spots but keep your eye on the colour of the water 
and you shouldn't have any problem. Don't be tricked by a bit of dark colour being grass on the bottom. Sometimes that can look like deeper water. But I've been up there in low tides and had no problem getting through in a trailer boat. The water in Fisherman's Gutter itself is mostly 4 to 8 metres deep. But if you're anchoring up overnight and got a little bit of wind, I'd be anchoring up close to one of the banks and just on the lee side of the bank. The closer you are to the bank, the more protection you're going to get from the wind. When the tide's high, you get less protection. When it's low, it will be better. Just make sure you're not that close to the bank that should you turn around overnight, you're not going to find yourself high and dry in the morning. And this is the track that I follow to exit from Fisherman's Gutter out towards the Fowl Ground and Harry Atkinson's Reef. It does get a bit shallow at one spot, but it's not too bad. Even at low tide you'll get through it no problem. And these couple of shots show Harry Atkinson's Reef to the southwest and the Fowl Ground to the northeast. There's a few marks on either, more marks on Harry Atkinson's than there are up on the Fowl Ground. But it's possible that overnight on both of them, even though they're very exposed, you can overnight on them if the weather's really good. Depending on your tolerance for rocking, that could be you know, 10 or 12 knots. I prefer it to be below 10 knots for overnighting, just in case it blows up a little bit stronger overnight. It usually doesn't, but it can happen. And the fishing there at night is pretty good. My main problem with fishing overnight is that the bunk calls me too early and I end up sleeping through till morning. At least I do these days. When I was younger I used to be able to fish all night and all day too. But nowadays a good sleep is just as attractive and being out on the water I find I sleep like a baby. Next we'll jump over to Mud Island. And that's not a bad island for anchoring up overnight. Not as good as some but... I've anchored there quite a few times and it's been okay. Fishing's pretty good around it as well. As you can see in this screenshot, you can get in fairly close to the island in 4 to 8 metres of water. Pretty much all around it. There's a few areas you've got to watch out for. But pretty much all around the island you can get in fairly close and be in fairly deep water. That's a key part to staying out of the weather. Get on the lee side of the island, get in as close as you can and still have enough water to float at low tide. So that makes Mud Island a pretty good anchorage most of the time. You can find somewhere around it where you can get out of the wind. But it's not an island that I've spent as much time at as I have at other anchorages. The times I have anchored up there, the bottom has been fine, but I haven't anchored up all around it, so I can't comment on the entire area. But as I said, the places I have anchored, the bottom has been fine for holding. And finally around Mud Island, this is the coral habitats. Up in the northwest corner, the reddish area there, is massive corals. That's the hard corals. The yellowish brownish areas, they are a mixture of hard and soft corals. And they're on the western side of the island and also on the northeastern side. As well as a couple of isolated patches up on the northwest and the northeast of the island. The rest around the south and east of the island is categorised as soft coral. Again, it's all sparse and you can fish all of it. I've actually done best on the western side and the southern side of the island, as well as that point up at the north, and that's around the Jeans Reef. A little bit further south at St. Helena Island, you can get some shelter. There's a couple of reasonable anchorages there. I have sheltered there at times. I think mainly in Wave Dancer. It's not a bad spot, however, there is no fishing. It's all in a green zone now. As you can see in this shot, that's the green zone around it. So anywhere you can anchor and find reasonable shelter, you can't fish. And for that reason, I don't go there anymore. Because if I anchor up, I want to be able to throw in a line. However, if you're not looking to fish, it's one island to consider. You can't get in as close around St. Helena Island as you can to some of the other islands in the deeper water. It does shallow up more, except over on the eastern side there's an area that comes in pretty close to the island. Depending on how long you want to stay, 
There's the jetty on the southwest corner of the island. You can get into the shallows around that. Just make sure you're not going to end up high and dry at low tide. The only times I've anchored up shallow in there is when I've gone into the shore and had a walk up to the old convict settlement and a look around there. You're not supposed to do that these days. They charge you for it and you've got to go in a party and you get escorted there. But you can get off onto the southern side of the island. I think they've got a fence across where you're not supposed to go anymore without uh, paying for it. But there's part of the island you can get on if you want to stretch your legs. But as I say, if you go in there in the shallows, just watch the tide. What I used to do when I went and beached there is I'd go in on a rising tide and I'd make sure I got out again before it started to fall. There's a couple of wrecks along the eastern side of St Helena. I'll just put the marks for them up here. I haven't found them on the sounder. I haven't even looked for them on the sounder. Mainly because there's a green zone there. There's no point in fishing. One of them may be on the edge of the green zone by the looks of it. I haven't investigated that either. Even so, it's really close to the green zone and there's no point in getting into an argument over whether you're fishing in the green zone or just outside it. Plenty of other places in the bay to fish. You don't have to put yourself at risk of getting a fine. So I just go elsewhere, but if you're in the area and you're keen to see what a wreck looks like on the sounder, you can have a look around and see if you can find them for yourself. But if you're going to fish them, make sure you check your green zone area first. I'm going to skip over Green Island. There's a few spots around there where you can anchor up. Nice little sandy beach on one spot as well. But it's much the same as the other islands as far as anchoring up overnight goes. So I'll skip over that and come down to Empire Point. I've anchored up at Empire Point a few times overnight. You can anchor up in deeper water and try fishing. There's some reefy areas around there. But if the wind's blowing a bit, you can get right into some really protected water, depending on the direction of the wind, of course. But this is a really protected area in at Empire Point. I've anchored in there a few times. Pick up some small fish in there. Haven't caught anything of great size. A couple of eagles squire but only just legal like 35 36 37 centimeters nothing huge not that i've got anyway but you will get some crabs taking your bait so if you wind your line in slowly when you feel some weight on it you might get a crab in and when it's blowing a bit this is the area that i like to get into between the mainland and the sandbanks the entrance is a bit shallow but if you take care you can get in there no worries it's not a bad area to anchor up wouldn't want to go there in gale force winds, of course, but provided you're in the lee side of the mainland or the lee side of the sandbank, it's quite acceptable in sort of up to 15 knots or so, maybe a bit more. You know, at least for me and my tolerance to rocking. I don't like huge rocks anymore, but if it's rocking a little bit, I don't mind it. And it does get you on the water in a position to leave early in the next morning. Depending on tide, of course, got to watch your exit. The exit to the south is deeper, or go up to the north and circle around the sandbank. You can get over the sandbank directly at high tide, and being on the water when you wake up gets you started that much earlier. There's also some massive coral around Empire Point, and depending on the weather conditions, you can anchor up there overnight to fish that area. If it's a bit windy, I tend to like to go in a bit closer to the mainland. But if it's all right, that's a great area to fish. And it's not very far from the ramp. So if the weather does turn unexpectedly, you can get out of the water really quick. And even though this is an overnighting video, I'll just mention for fishing that there's reef all the way up to King Island. It's patchy and it's categorised as sparse. But you can fish all this reef all along there. You'll find it on the sounder with no problem, particularly if you've got a side scan sounder, it stands out really well, and it's not far from the ramp if you launch from Raby Bay or Wellington Point. There's even a little patch of mixed hard and soft coral down at Raby Bay. So that's another area to fish, and it's just a stone's throw from the ramp. One of the main attractions for me overnighting at Empire Point is all the fishing areas that are available in the morning depending on the weather. I've shown you all the ones up along the mainland area, but there's West Peel Artificial Reef just over there. 
Beyond that, it's the southwest rocks and other areas around Peel that we've talked about. And up to the north a bit is Hybers Light. And fishing around Hybers Light anywhere within about 100 metres of it can be very productive at times. Maybe I haven't fished around Hybers Light enough to be able to predict when to fish it, like for the tides and everything. I find it's a bit hit and miss. People that fish it more regularly may do a lot better, but for me, I find it's either a really slow session or it's a terrific session. But I can't figure any rhyme or reason to it according to the tides, the moon or anything else. But as I say, maybe that's just me and I don't fish it enough to figure it out. And once again, I've run out of time to do any more to this video if I'm going to get it up on the weekend. Very busy time for me at the moment trying to get all the work done. But I will be able to finish it next week. I'll do some of the southern areas. There's not a lot to say about them. They're all much the same. There's a couple of ones in particular I want to mention. And as I say, I'll cover them next week. Until then, good fishing.